Hello, good evening, my dear doctors. Will you able to listen to me? Kindly reply in the chat box. Will you able to listen to me clearly? Will you able to see the screen and the video? Yeah, fine. Then um, we'll start our session. And as I, as I informed you before, this is the part two of this our session. Like our session, it's the IBQ based revision session, and it is the part two. It contains of three subjects. We'll start with ENT. We'll move on with PSM, and then we'll finish with ophthalmo. Fine. This also will exactly take around um, one hour forty five minutes to two hours. Means there might be a plus or minus fifteen minutes, and just bear with us. Fine. And I'll be means I'll be seeing you with chat box actively. And sometimes um, there might be some glitch, so I couldn't see your messages. Okay, so don't worry about that. Um, I will see you at the last. And if you have any questions, just keep it with you or just write somewhere else so that we'll be addressing your questions at the end of our session. Because if you write in the middle, it will be lost. Fine. Just keep with your questions um, in a safe manner, and we'll answer your questions in a Q and A session at the end of this. Lecture fine. Then without wasting time, we'll move on with our slides. First, we'll starting. We are starting with ENT. Fine. If you see this image, if you see this image, this is how. What is the name of this year? You will think of what is the name of this year? Waiting for your answers in the chat box. Yeah, fine. Yeah, most of you are getting it correct. Yeah, it is what it is there. Cauliflower, yeah, it is the cauliflower, yeah. Which is actually because of this pinna pericondritis. And what is the most common cause of this cauliflower? Yeah? Means which organism is responsible for this pinna pericondritis? Yeah, it is what it is the pseudomonas. It is the pseudomonas. And it happens most commonly in the traumatic pain, means like in the boxes where there is a repeated trauma to the external ear. And this is how this cauliflower ear looks like. And just to answer me a question which one of the following, option A or option B, is known as surface ear? Yeah, fine. Yeah, if you are answering, yeah, fine. Like option B, it is the Surface here. What is surface here? Surface here is just the exostosis. If you see this image, you can see some exostosis because of this surface. Fine. This is how this surface here looks like. Whereas option A, it is what it is the acute otitis externa, which is also known as it is also known as which here? It is also known as the swimmer's here. Okay, it is also known as the swimmer's here. Fine. Next one, if you move on with this, this is how this wet paper blot appearance or the wet newspaper appearance you will see in a case of otomycosis. What is this other name of this otomycosis? Will you be able to answer me in the chat box? Yeah, fine. Yeah, the answer is that it is also known as what? Singapore, yeah. Singapore, yeah. And you can see this automycotic pigments, like mainly this automycosis, it's mainly caused by this 
aspergillus niger and niger we know niger means black and this will produce this black colonies and this black color pigments so just remember this thing okay so otomycosis it's the singapore air exostosis it is the surface air whereas this acute otitis externa it is the swimmer's air okay try to differentiate these three things and now we'll move on to one case based image questions like for example there is a immunocompromised patients or a diabetic patient with chronic history of chronic history of ear disease and on examination you will able to see a finding known as on examination you will able to see the granuloma formation granuloma formation it is suggestive of which condition answer in the chat box yeah correct guys you are getting it correct it is seen in a case of malignant otitis externa fine it is seen in a case of malignant otitis externa and you just remember about this malignant otitis externa means there is the this for this condition also the most common cause is what the most common cause is the pseudomonas pseudomonas okay and to diagnose this condition which can we use remember to you this thing to diagnose this malignant otitis externa will use this technetium 99m bone scan okay and to know this prognosis of this malignant otitis externa will use one more scan to know this prognosis will use one more scan known as gallium 67 scan okay so just try to remember this because most of the times you will be getting confused with this technetium 99 and the gallium 67 scan okay so don't get confused fine with this same pledge we'll move on to the our next slide if you see this if you see our next slide you will able to see this normal tympanic membrane with this normal tympanic membrane will able to tell me whether this is a tympanic membrane of right ear or a left ear answers in the chat box yeah fine you are getting it correct it is the tympanic membrane of the right ear remember if you draw a clock and if you in the same clock if you draw a clock and in the same clock if you write the letter r means this r will be suggestive of means this the arrow in the uh, r means will be towards the which side towards which o'clock towards the five o'clock towards the five o'clock so remember if the cone of light if it is falling at the five o'clock position it's 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 in the right ear whereas in the case of left ear you'll able to see this cone of light in seven o'clock position okay this is how this cone of light looks like and this cone of light happens because of this bony landmark known as ambu okay bony landmark known as ambu and we know just don't confuse with one more thing means ambu is responsible for cone of light whereas the most prominent or the most stabilized structure in, in the tympanic membrane is the lateral process of the malleus means just remember it is the more consistent part is the lateral process of malleus okay lateral process of the malleus you just remember these two things fine yeah with the same thing we'll move on to the next one if you see this image you'll able to see this bony landmarks very much means you will able to appreciate this bony landmarks very clearly means it's this type of more prominent appreciable bony landmarks they'll be seen in the case of retracted tympanic membrane and just remember only one thing in a case of retracted tympanic membrane you will see type c type c tympanogram okay type c tympanogram that's it you need to remember then with some other uh, some other tympanic membrane images if you see this there is a perforation perforation of this tympanic membrane you know in a case of perforation to the tympanic membrane and along with that there might be case for example it can happen in a case of acute serious, serious otitis media or chronic serious otitis media there are two types of chronic serious otitis media csom and in csom there are two types one is the safe type and another one is known as unsafe type okay safe it is also known as tubo tympanic and unsafe it is also known as aticoantral okay so if you see this type it means if it is a chronic history given if it is a chronic history given and it will be suggestive of this tubo tympanic type okay you just remember this thing as a perforation of the tympanic membrane fine okay? next one we'll move on to this next perforation of this tympanic membrane you can see okay you can see this image you can see in this tympanic membrane there is a irregular irregular perforation along with some bleeds means there is some bleeding spots 
So this irregular appearance of this tympanic membrane, along with this bleeding, both of them they are seen in which type of tympanic membrane rupture? Answers in the chat box. Yeah, these they are seen in a case of traumatic tympanic membrane rupture. And we know in a case of traumatic tympanic membrane rupture, our management is what? Our management is conservative. Our management is what? It is the conservative management. Okay. Please remember these two points about this traumatic tympanic membrane rupture. Fine. Next one. We'll move on to the structure. What is this? What is this instrument, which is means our instrument or this thing which is being inserted into the tympanic membrane? What is this name of this processes or this thing? Yeah. You are getting it correct. It is what it is the grommet insertion. Grommet insertion. And we know this is how this grommet look like. And we know this grommet will insert in a case of serous otitis media are also known as the glue here. Okay. Are also known as glue here. In a case, like mostly they will give this case, like if there is a child presenting with features of adenoid hypertrophy along with conductive hearing loss. For that, for such cases, he will use this grommet to relieve this conductive hearing loss after doing the adenoidectomy. Okay, fine. So just remember these two things. Yeah, fine. Now you are getting it correct. We'll move on to some other images of this tympanic membrane. If you see this image, what is the name of this appearance? What do you will think of? Answers in the chat box. Yeah, correct. You are getting it correct. It is what? It is the cartwheel appearance. It is the cartwheel appearance, which means in which you will see this bulged out tympanic membrane along with this dilated vasculatures. Okay. So this bulged out tympanic membrane is known as cartwheel appearance and it is seen in a case of acute serous, means acute superior to otitis media. Fine, you'll just remember these things. And next one, if you see this one, this flamingo pink color, this flamingo pink color, pink color discoloration means next to the arc, flamingo pink color mass means which next to the tympan, intact tympanic membrane. This is seen in which condition? You will see this flamingo pink color. Answers in the chat box. Yeah, fine, you are getting it correct. You will see in a case of otosclerosis. You will see in a case of otosclerosis. And we know in a case of, and most commonly this one, it is seen in a case of active case of otosclerosis. And this otosclerosis, they will be aggravated, aggravated during the pregnancy. Okay. During pregnancy, this otosclerosis will be aggravated. And this otosclerosis, it is an autosomal dominant condition and it will always involve the bilateral use. Okay, it always involves the bilateral ear. You just remember these things. Fine. And to treat this active case, we can give a drug known as sodium chloride. Fine. Sodium chloride. And this is about this flamingo pink color thing. Sign means and this flamingo pink color is known as the Schwarzen. Remember this sign? It is known as the Schwarzen. Fine. Then move on to this type of tympanic membrane in which you will be able to see there is an intact tympanic membrane and there is a whitish mass behind the intact tympanic membrane. What will you think of? Answers in the comment box. Yeah, fine. Yeah, you are getting it correct. You will see in a case of congenital cholestitoma. Okay. You will see in a case of congenital cholestitoma. Okay, fine. This one. This whitish mass behind the tympanic membrane means intact tympanic membrane. Fine. And if you are able to see this image, you can see I will just before describing this image, I will just describing, I will just describe this history. There is a history of pulsatile tinnitus. Pulsatile tinnitus. And, in, and there is some few cases. There is a pulsatile or there is a pulsatile or bleeding from here. Okay. So there is a case of pulsatile tinnitus. And along with sometimes they can present with conductive hearing loss. What did you think of? Yeah, fine, you are getting it correct. And this is known as the rising sun sign. Rising sun sign. This rising sun sign, it will be seen in case of which condition? It is seen in a case of the glomus jugular. Fine, 
it will see in a case of glomus tumor glomus tumor which is also known as the glomus jugulare and glomus tympanic fine yeah you are getting it correct yeah fine then we'll move on to some of some of this pta images and if you see this some of this pta images this is the absolutely I mean this is the normal pta one okay this is the normal pta one whereas where in which this bone both bone conduction and this both bone conduction and the air conduction is almost normal and if you see there is a gap which is known as the ab gap air bone gap if you see this kind of air bone gaps it is seen in which type of hearing loss answers in the comment section they yeah, are correct you are getting it correct it is seen in a case of conductive hearing loss it is seen in a case of conductive hearing loss fine next one if you see this one you can see there is a decrease in both conductive and sensory hearing loss and it's it's a kind of mixed type of hearing loss in which you can see also this air bone means ab gap so it is it's a kind of mixed mixed hearing loss fine and you can see this one this there is no ab gap but there is a dip and it is actually what it is a sensory neural hearing loss and the sensory neural hearing loss in which if you see there is a dip at which hits there is a dip dip at 4000 hits it's not 3000 hits just remember it's there are dip at 4000 hits and this dip at 4000 hits it's known as which notch is it known as kahat's notch no it is known as which notch it is known as the boys notch it is known as the boys notch which is which is seen in which condition answers in the comment section yeah it is seen in that it is seen in the noise induced hearing loss okay noise induced hearing loss you will see this boys notch in a case of noise induced hearing loss fine next one this one if there is a dip at if there is a dip at 2000 hertz if there is a dip at 2000 hertz and it is seen in which condition it is seen in otosclerosis and what is this name of this notch answers in the comment section yeah fine i am getting it correct it is seen in a case of otosclerosis it is what it is the kahat snatch it is the kahat snatch okay please remember at this point into this otosclerosis you will see this kahat snatch okay kahat snatch yeah. you are giving most of the correct answers so just be in the rhythm be till the end of the session like we'll be having some more like good points so that you could able to means you will get at the end of the session fine next one this how this tympanogram it's done our tympanometry how it is done fine if you see this tympanometry this is how this normal tympanometry looks like this is how this normal tympanometry looks like and it will uses the type a tympanogram whereas if you see this one means it's going in a distance it's going in a distance and it is above and this type of tympanogram they are known as this type ad okay this type of ad means ad means d for distortion or distortion okay yeah sure you will get this pdf in your groups okay so don't worry you will get this pdf from this rs groups don't worry fine and this type of ad graphs it will be seen in a case of distortion of this ossicles okay distortion of this air ossicles fine next one if you see this type of type c type c means it's like it's looks exactly similar like a type a but it just displayed means it just displays to this side so this type of type c tympanogram it is seen in a case of eustachian tubal obstruction are also seen in a case of retracted tympanic membrane okay retracted tympanic membrane and let me give you a case scenario in which of the following conditions you will see this small one as this small one as type of tympanometry answers in the comment section yeah you will see this as are the small type of tympanogram you will see in a case of otosclerosis otosclerosis okay as for otosclerosis fine then you see this image what is this image what is this otoscopic image suggest you of you can see this presence of this air fluid level and this is suggest you of glue air okay this is suggest you of glue air or serous otitis media and in a case of glue air or a serous otitis media you will see this type b type b are this flat one okay type b are this flat type of tympanogram fine 
and this is how this type c we know the normal one it will be here whereas this one is displaced to this side and it is the type c one which is seen in a case of retracted tympanic membrane so you just don't cram the data try to remember okay fine try to remember in a case of photosclerosis the the ossicles will be fixed so it couldn't move so it will produce a small graph fine and since ossicles are distorted it will produce a type of graph fine you just remember fine with this with this understanding we'll move on to the next part of our discussion this is the test what is this name of this test in which you will see this two steps which is done for benign paroxysmal positional vertigo what is the name of this test yeah fine i will try to adjust my camera yeah it is known as what it is known as dix haplic test it is known as the dix haplic test which is used in a case of benign para paroxysmal positional vertigo which is dix dix for it has two steps and to treat this benign para paroxysmal positional vertigo we will use this maneuver what is the name of this maneuver this is known as what this is known as the eplis maneuver eplis maneuver and in this e for the fifth alphabet so it will be containing of five steps it will be containing of five steps so just remember this thing fine this these are the two things you know this benign paroxysmal positional vertigo it happens because of this displacement of this otoliths fine we just remember then we'll move on to this side what is this name of this appearance what is this name of this appearance is it the battle sign as is in the comment section yeah you are getting it correct it is what it is there ironed out mastoid this ironed out mastoid is seen in a case of which condition it is seen in a case of mastoiditis mastoiditis and you need to differentiate this ironed out mastoid along with one more condition known as one more means along with one more sign known as what grissinger sign grissinger sign in a case of grissinger sign you will able to see this pitting edema you will able to see this pitting edema over the mastoid this is known as the grissinger sign and it is seen in a case of sagittal sinus thrombosis and it is seen in a case of sagittal sinus thrombosis just remember this points and this is how the ct image this is how the ct image of a mastoiditis looks like we know this mastoid cells they are containing the, they will contains there and if it is inflamed it will be containing the fluids and this fluids will occlude the spaces and we know air looks black in air whereas water or the fluid will be means it will be it won't be black in color fine next one if you see this image if you see this image you will able to see this bilateral bilateral ice cream cone appearance on mri look okay, are exam or contrast enhanced mri what it is suggest you of answer in the comment section yeah it is suggest you of vestibular schwannoma and we know if there is a bilateral if there is a bilateral vestibular schwannoma it will be associated with which one of the following it will be associated with the nf2 could you please tell me in the comments comment box in a case of nf2 which chromosome will be involved yeah we know yeah correct we are getting it correct it is the chromosome number 22 it is the chromosome number 22 in the case of nf1 it is the chromosome number 70 fine yeah. could you please name this sign yeah this is what this is our typical battle sign this is our typical battle sign we'll see in a case of middle cranial fossa fracture you will see in a case of middle cranial fossa fracture This is what is the name of this test to check this patency of this nasal valves? Answer in the comment section. Yeah, it is known as the Cottle's test. It is known as the Cottle's test, which is used to test this patency of this nasal valves. Fine. Or uh, during the nasal obstruction, if it it will be get relieved. Okay. Fine. Then this one, this target sign, target sign is seen in. which condition this kind of target appearance is seen in which condition 
is it seen in just csf rhinorrhea or the it is seen in a case of yeah you are getting it correct it is seen in a case of traumatic csf rhinorrhea it is seen in a case of traumatic sign like csf rhinorrhea and we know the the gold standard investigation for this traumatic csf rhinorrhea is which one it is the beta transferrin assay it is the beta transferrin assay could you please name this line which extends from this medial canthus could you please name this line which extends from this medial canthus to the angle of this mandible yeah you are getting it correct it is known as what ongus line ongus line okay and it is used in a case of maxillary sinus cancer fine no worries no worries if you get uh, wrong also don't worry you will just um, get this things uh, corrected at the end of the session and we have more 31 days left for our exam okay so just be calm and stay positive fine we'll move on to our next slide if you see this slide what is this instrument which is being displayed here what is the name of this thing i it is what it is the seagull speculum Se seagull speculum and it is used to see used to do seagullization seagullization are used to put pressure into the middle ear and also it is also used for and it can provide us the magnified view magnified view along with sometimes we can use like in previous years it can be used to even use some medications like borax powder they used to spray with using the seagull speculum and this one it is known as what is the name of this probe answers in the comment section they were getting it correct yeah right it is what it is known as the jobson harness probe harness probe and this probe will used to remove the remove the foreign body from the eac we just remember it is used to remove the foreign body from the eac fine next one this is how this auditory brain stem implant looks like because we know in few conditions like for example in a case of nf2 associated vestibular schwannoma we couldn't do cochlear implant so in such cases we'll use this auditory brain stem implants fine and we know this is how this bone anchoring hearing aid or baha looks like this baha it will be used in such cases for example there will be intact eight nerve but there will be in inosia means there will be absence of pinna and there sometimes there will be absence of even eac so in such cases you will use this bone anchoring hearing aid to help them hearing fine you just remember this is how this bone anchoring hearing aid looks like and it will be anchored to our skull bone fine just remember it is not vera it is baha fine remember and just try to differentiate between this two forceps if you see this forceps you will get sometimes confirmed like you will get sometimes confused if you see this image in which w means if you see this one w there is a means there is a straight one this straight one it's what it is the valsham forces if you see this valsham forceps it will be used for nasal bone fractures whereas this one ashman's forceps it will be used for which one it is used for the nasal septal corrections okay so just you um, just remember this one if you see this straight one if you see this straight one it is what it is the valsham forces fine we we'll just remember this one fine we'll, with this thing we'll move on to the next one right you know this is how this laryngoscopy which is being performed okay. what is this name of this prosthesis could you answer in the chat box they are getting it correct it is known as what it is known as bloom singer prosthesis it is known as the bloom singer prosthesis which is used after the total laryngectomy and this is how this electro larynx looks like fine this is how this electro larynx looks like then we'll come on to this thing if you see this thing what is this procedure which is being done here is it direct laryngoscopy answer in the check comment box no it is not the direct laryngoscopy we are using a mirror we are using a mirror to see this Larynx means use, we are using a mirror to see this larynx. So it is a indirect laryngoscopy. It is a indirect laryngoscopy. Okay, and just remember, indirect laryngoscopy it is a OPD procedure. It is a OPD procedure, and just remember this few points about this also. We'll use this straight mirror. 
will use this which mirror we will use this straight mirror in a case of indirect laryngoscopy and it is a opd procedure and some structures we couldn't see it for example we cannot see this anterior commissure of this vocal cord and which are lying below the vocal cord we couldn't see it for example this um ventricles we couldn't see we couldn't appreciate in a case of indirect laryngoscopy but remember it is a opd it is a opd procedure fine yeah you are getting it correct just keep the just going fine this is how this normal larynx appears you can see this true vocal cord and it will be pale in color why it is pale in color because it doesn't have any vascularity and it doesn't have any lymphatic supply fine fine and and just for because of this reason in a case of smokers in a case of smokers you can see there is this accumulation of fluids there will be some accumulation of fluids between this epithelial layer and the lamina propria and what is this name of this condition which lead to this edema in smokers in this layer what is the name of this edema yeah you are getting it correct it is what it is the rinkis edema it is known as the rinkis edema fine and this is how this posterior commissure looks like and this is how this anterior commissure looks like. fine next you know this one this how this is how this vocals nodules looks like and we know this vocals nodules they also known as what's the name of this nodules don't confuse this rinkis edema along with keratosis larynx fine keratosis larynx it's also seen in smokers but it is not the edema it is some some kind of pre malignant conditions whereas this rinkis edema it just a fluid collection since there is no lymphatic drainage since there is no lymphatic drainage the edema will appear fine just remember this one this vocal nodule it is also known as singers nodules screamers nodules or teachers nodule we know this one occurs between the anterior one third to the posterior two third and the management usually it will be conservative along with ppa plus voice rest ppa plus voice rest fine this is the management for the vocal nodules and this one what is the name of this thing which is occurs as unilateral we know vocal nodules it will be always bilateral fine it will be always what it is always bilateral we see some kind of unilateral lesions okay between this same anterior one third to the posterior two third what is this name of this thing answer in the comment box yeah it is what it is the it is the vocal polyp okay it is the polyps polyps usually it will occurs as a unilateral fine you are getting it correct and where you will see this omega shaped epiglottis in which condition yeah you are getting it correct you will see this kind of omega shaped epiglottis in a case of laryngo malicia fine laryngo malicia and if you see this image like if you see this image this kind of mouse nibbled mouse nibbled vocal cords this mouse nibbled vocal cords they are seen in which condition this kind of mouse nibbled vocal cords they are seen in a case of tb larynx and just remember the first sign the first sign of tb larynx the first sign of tb larynx is what the first sign of tb larynx it is the hyperemia hyperemia means a red color red color discoloration of this vocal cord fine we just know with this we'll move on to our next image if you see if there is a multiple projection if you see there is a multiple projections on this vocal cord and it will be mobile and if you see this kind of multiple projections it will be suggestive of juvenile papillomatosis of larynx okay fine and it is also will be caused by the hpv variants of which variants will lead to this kind of juvenile papillomatosis answers in the comment section yeah you are getting it correct it is the hpv 6 and 11 okay it is the hpv 6 and 11 fine then we'll move on to the next one if you see this one if you see this air filled structure air filled structure at the lateral part of neck at the lateral part of neck and there is a history of means is he is having a history of, or the occupation he is having of as a trumpet blower it will be suggestive of which one it will be suggestive of laryngosil it will be suggestive of this laryngosil and in a case of laryngosil you will see this one sign known as what is the name of this sign you will see answers in the comment section 
Yeah, yeah, you are getting it correct. It is known as what? This is known as the brace and means. And pressing, you will you will see this means and pressing, you will able to hear the like um like of sound means because this air exit. Okay, fine. Next one, if you see this thing, this is how this, this is how this Zenker's diverticulums looks like. And there will be always a history of halitosis and along with regurgitation, regurgitation of previous food. Okay, regurgitation of this previous food. And this Zenker's diverticulum, it will be most commonly occurs in an area, it will be most commonly occurs in an area known as Killian's dehiscence or Killian's area. And this Killian's dehiscence or this Killian's area, it will be between this, between this thyropharynges and this cricopharynges. Between this oblique thyropharynges and this longitudinal cricopharynges, you will see this area which is known as, which is known as what? Which is known as the Killian's dehiscence. Killian's area or Killian's dehiscence, where this Zenkus diverticulum occurs. And just remember, this Zenkus diverticulum it is a false diverticulum. Fine. Yeah, you are getting it correct. Yeah, you can see this fine. Adenoid phases. What are the features of this adenoid phases? Answers in the comment section. Yeah, you are getting it correct. Yeah, I could able to see a few answers. Yeah, cool. Yeah, you will be able to see this crowded teeth along with some kind of elongation and high arched pellets. High arched pellets. And these are seen in a case of adenal hypertrophy. And these children may also present with this ear act. They can present with this ear act because of this serous otitis media. And in a case of juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, what is the name of this appearance of face you will be able to see? <clears throat> Answers in the comment section. Yeah, you will be able to see this frog face. This is not a typical frog face, but you will be able to see this frog face deformity. Fine. And there will be always history of recurrent epistaxis. There will be always a history of recurrent epistaxis. Fine. And what is the most common vessel which is responsible for epistaxis in a case of juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma? Answers in the comment section. They were getting it correct. It is what it is the spino palatine artery. It is the spino palatine artery which is responsible for this for this recurrent epistaxis. And we know this juvenile nasopharyngeal angiofibroma, it will originate from the, which foramen, it all, just remember the same artery, spinopalatine artery, it also comes from this spinopalatine foramen. Okay, spinopalatine foramen. And in CT, you'll be able to see two signs. One is known as this one, antral sign. In the case of antral sign, you'll be able to see this, Angiofibromites pushing this which wall? Is this anterior wall or the posterior wall? They are getting it correct. It is the pushing of this posterior wall. It is the pushing of the posterior wall. Okay, fine. It is what? It is known as the antral sign. And you will see one more sign known as Holman Miller sign. Holman Miller sign. It's actually what? It is the, just this widening. Widening of the spinopalatine foramen. Okay, it is just this widening of the spinopalatine foramen. Okay, yeah, you are getting it correct. Okay, so just in the proper place, you just keep going. Okay, with this, we'll move on this thing. What is this name of this thing? Is it Quincy or Quinky? Yeah, it is what it is the Quinky edema. It is the Quinky edema. Quinky edema, it is actually the edema of Ovala. It is the edema of the ovula. Fine. Next one, if you see this peritonsillar abscess, this peritonsillar abscess, it pulls this ovula to the opposite side. Remember, to remember about this peritonsillar abscess, this peritonsillar abscess, it is a abscess collection near to the tonsil and it will push this ovula to the opposite side. Okay. It will push this ovula to the opposite side. Okay. You just remember, it is seen in a case of peritonsillar abscess. And in a case of parapharyngeal abscess, in a case of parapharyngeal abscess, you will be able to see this uvula. This uvula will be in the midline. Okay, will be in the midline, whereas this abscess will be in the unilateral or one side aspect. So it is seen in a case of parapharyngeal abscess. 
fine whereas in the case of peritonsillar abscess this uvula will be pushed to the neck side fine and yeah there is a no neck swelling in a case of peritonsillar abscess fine and there will be neck swelling in a case of para pharyngeal abscess there will be presence of neck swelling neck swelling and in the case of this retro pharyngeal abscess there will be widening of this preventricular space fine in the case of retro pharyngeal abscess there will be a widening of this prevertebral space prevertebral space and that you can see in a case of lateral x-ray fine you just remember this one fine that's it this is about this abscess part we'll move on to the next one what is this name of this tumor it is actually a new like a misnomer actually it is not a tumor it is what it is the rhinophyma are also known as the potato nose it is the rhinophyma are also known as which nose it is the potato nose it's also sometimes known as potato tumor fine fine that's why we are getting it correct fine next one if you see some conditions in which the most it is most commonly seen in lower socio economic females in which you will able to see this roomy nasal cavity along with excessive crest formation along with excessive crest formation and then you will able to see one type of anosmia what is the name of this anosmia you will see in a case of this roomy nasal cavity along with this excess crest formation conditions and in the common section yeah it is what it is the merciful anosmia and this they are seen in a condition known as oziana okay it is seen in a case of oziana fine are also known as which one it is also known as atrophic rhinitis and if you see this both rhinophyma and oziana means rhinophyma it's actually what it is the blockage of this sebaceous glands it's due to the blockage of this sebaceous glands fine and if you see this both of this thing together it is what it is the rhino sclerosis and in a case of rhino sclerosis you will able to see this external deformity which is being happening and in this you will able to see these cells known as mycelial cells mycelial cells and you you also able to see one more body known as what is the name of this body as is in the comment section it is known as the russell's body it is known as the russell body it is known as the russell body okay right? we just know this two things right? with this thing we'll move on to the next part fine right? and if you see this is there is a history of trauma and you can able to see this bilateral swelling in septum what this is suggestive of yeah fine you are getting it correct it is suggestive of septal hematoma and the septal hematoma it is a it is a emergency and we need to aspirate it we need to aspirate it fine you just remember we need to aspirate it and if you see this one if you see this one like mulberry like a mass which is being um a mulberry like mass which is being protruding out what is this one it is what hands in the comment section it is what it is the rhino rhino sporidiasis sporidiasis and this rhino sporidiasis it is most commonly seen in the coastal regions of tamil nadu or in the southern areas where there is a where there is a more swimming in the ponds fine this is most commonly seen in tamil nadu or in this coastal regions of tamil nadu fine this is this rhinosporidiasis and we know it is caused by this organism known as rhinosporidium rhinosporidium seberi and remember it is non cultivable it is a non cultivable protozoa just remember these two points about this rhinosporidiasis fine with this knowledge we'll move on to our like next part if if you see this one it is how this leaf roots fraction which are being classified if you just want to remember how this leaf roots are being classified you just remember in the case of leaf root type one it will happen at this level and it will separate this one this palate from the above so just remember for type one you just keep your hands like this it is the type one leaf roots fracture whereas for a type two you will just keep your hands like this so it will become a triangular okay so this triangular means this cranio facial distension will be happen in a case of type 2 leaf roots fracture fine this is type 1 and this is the type 2 leaf roots fracture fine 
right this is the type 1 and this is the type 2 leaflet structure and if you remember this type 1 and type 2 you, it will be easy for you to remember the type 3 leaflet structure right and there are two types of nasal fracture there are two types of nasal fracture one is this vertical one if you see this vertical or the parallel one it is known as chevalet fracture whereas if you see something kind of horizontal one it is known as jargonet fracture it is known as the jargonet fracture right you just able to correlate if it is if you see this vertical one which is parallel one it is what it is the chevalet fracture and we know the most common bone which is being fractured in the face what is the most common bone which is being fractured in the face as is in the chat box yeah it is the nasal bone nasal bone is the most common bone which is being fractured in the nose and if you able to see there are few types of few types of cells like the special cells you are able to see if there is some cells which are related to the orbital floor some paranasal cells which are related which is the paranasal cells which is related to the orbital floor as is in the comment section yeah you are getting it right relation to the orbital floor we'll see this halos we'll see this halos cells and in relation to this optic nerve and in relation to this optic nerve remember this o for o you remember this in relation to optic nerve you will see this so we'll see, see this cells known as onodi cells onodi cells by the way this is this Halo cells, which is seen around the floor of the orbit, which is seen around the floor of the orbit, and in relation to this anterior ethmoidal cells, remember this anterior A for A. It is the agar nasi cells. Okay, it is the agar nasi cells, and in relation and the most consistent cell of this ethmoid, the most consistent cell of this ethmoid is the anterior ethmoidal. means like it is not the anterior ethmoidal the most consistent it is the bulla ethmoidalis it is the bulla ethmoidalis right that is the bulla ethmoidalis yeah they were getting it correct right. this one just you just remember about this few x ray views fine what is this name of this x ray view this occipital mental x ray view answer in the comment section they were getting it right it is what it is the Caldwell's view. It is must be Caldwell's view. Fine. And if you see, if there is a closed mouth, if there is a closed mouth, and if you are able to see this maxillary sinus and this spinoid sinus, what is this name of this view? Is this water's view or the pierce view? Don't get confused. To keep this water inside your mouth, you need to close your mouth. So to keep this water inside, you need to close your mouth. So this closed mouth view. it is known as what it is the water's view there is the opposite of one which is this open mouth open mouth it is the pierce view it is the pierce view fine this is about this views you need to remember about the okay views you need to remember about this axis fine we will able to see this one. what is the name of this sign as is in the common box they were getting it correct it is the steeple sign and the steeple sign we you know the steeple sign it is seen in a case of acute tracheo bronchiolitis bronchiolitis and what is the most common organism what is the most common cause for it the most common cause for it i was getting it it is the para influenza virus it is the para influenza virus and next one if you see this swollen swollen epiglottis Swollen epiglottis are also known as it is also known as which sign? It is also known as the rising sun sign. And an X-ray. What is this name of this thing? It is the thumbprint sign. Thumbprint sign. And this both of them they are seen in a case of acute epiglottitis. Epiglottitis. And we know in India now the most common cause for this is it is the streptococcus pneumonia. Okay. Streptococcus mainly the streptococcus species because we will be the child will they are vaccinated against this another species which is the Haemophilus influenza species. Fine. Next one. Just remember this about this two tracheostomy tubes. They are like in a case of in in a case for short time tracheostomy we use this PVC tubes. We we'll use this PVC tubes. Whereas this uncuff they are used for children. This one with cuff we we'll use for adults. when they are actually for some temporary procedures when someone is admitted in the icu whereas this one for some kind of coma patients or 
or some someone is having some long history or going to be bedridden for a long time will use this metallic tubes known as jackson tube and the fuller's tube to differentiate this jackson and fuller's tube remember the jackson tube it consists of three parts and it will be a complete tube whereas if you see this fuller's tube remember this fuller's it's a fatawa tube it is a fatawa tube it means if you see this there will be a opening okay there will be opening or there will be cleavage so it's not a full tube fuller's tube it's not a full tube so there will be opening or a cleavage in this so fatawa tube it is the fuller's tube it is the fuller's tube okay and finally we'll come to this one you know like most of you you know how to differentiate this one the kind in the east of vegas and the trachea if you don't know just just see this one word we know how you write this east of vegas means east so vegas and you are writing it from the anterior view means you are writing it from the anterior view. you are writing it not writing in the transition so if you see this complete kind in an ap view it is it is the foreign body in the east of vegas fine and it is and it will be opposite in a case of trachea in a trachea you will see this slit shaped foreign body or slit shaped kind in a case of ap view okay just remember this two things it will be enough for you to solve just remember this one thing it will be help you to solve this question fine and yeah, that's correct that's that's your answer in amazingly just keep the keep the josh and keep on going fine if you see this image this is how this this how this bell's palsy looks like bell's palsy looks like and bell's palsy is actually what it is the lower motor neuron damage and in a case of bell's palsy we know there is a there will be no wrinkles in the forehead fine and there will be deviation of this deviation of this mouth to the opposite side and there will be flattening of this nasolabial fold and there will be like the patient could in close the eyes completely so there might be chances of exposure keratitis just remember this few points about this one it is the bell's palsy and to treat this bell's palsy we'll use we'll, we'll use steroids we'll use steroids and some antivirals fine and if you see this thing in a, in such cases if you see this vesicles along with bell's palsy bell's palsy will be it will be suggest you of which syndrome you will think of which syndrome and as in the comment section yeah it will be seen in a case of yeah correct you are getting it correctly will it will be seen in a case of ramsey hunt syndrome okay and it will be caused by which virus it will be caused by the reactivation of this varicella virus which is actually what it is the herpes zoster one it is the herpes zoster one and remember if there is involvement of this tip of the nose which is actually related to the ophthalmology if there is involvement of this tip of this nose what is the name of this sign known as it is known as the hutchinson sign hutchinson's hutchinson's sign and this is due to involvement of the nasociliary branch nasociliary branch right nasociliary branch yeah you are getting it correct like that's what like we done with the ent okay we done with the ent and we'll move on with pso fine and just before just remember if your dreams cast means if your dreams doesn't scare you means the dream will be small for you so just remember you will be always worry like whether you will able to pass this fmg whether what will happen next day or next or fmg you will be always freaking out and you will be always scared don't worry don't scare if you scare you won't do things in a proper manner so don't be scared just keep going with the flow okay whatever things happen it it will happen good for you only so keep the josh and believe in yourself and don't be scared and just follow your instinct and keep your hope alive okay with the same motivation we'll move on to the next session which is on the psm fine right? and psm you just need to remember just few things first about this epidemiological study designs this epidemiological study designs there is no or less images which are being asked so i just put up some images to correlate few concepts fine right? this prospective cohort study or this cohort study in a case of cohort study what you will measure will you measure incidence or prevalence Answer in the comment section. Yeah, correct. You will measure which one? You will measure the incidence. What is the most famous cohort study? You know which is being done.
What is the most famous one? Answer in the comment section. Yeah, correct. We are getting into it. It is the Framingham's heart stone. It is the Framingham's heart stone. And we know with this heart study, we can calculate one more thing known as relative risk. Relative risk. We know. In a case of how you will differentiate. In a case of case control, you will be having this case and control, and you will be going back in a time, and you will just asking history. Fine, it is seen in a case of case control study. Whereas in a case of cohort study, you will just there are two types. One is the prospective one. Next one is the retrospective one. The prospective one you will divide into groups. You will divide into groups, and you will you will classify them based on the risk factors to the exposed one and to the non-exposed one, and you will go ahead in the time. Means you will go prospectively uh, with time. You will see the changes. This is what this is the prospective cohort study. Fine. This is about these two study designs. And fine. If you see this case control study, we will able to measure incidents are prevalent from the case control study. Answer in the comment section. No, we cannot measure incidents are prevalence with case control study. But we can measure only one ratio, which is known as what? Which is known as the odds ratio. Just remember, we can measure only odds ratio with this case control study. Whereas with this cross sectional study. Which is also known as what? Which is also known as the snapshot study, or also known as the which study? It as it measures the prevalence, it also known as the prevalence study. Fine. We just remember this one. And fine. Fine. Just you just remember this one. Next one. You know this for this. After this one, you just remember about these two things. You see, if you see a graph in which the cases are increasing suddenly and they are decreasing suddenly, means there is a rise up along with means are rapid. There is a rapid increase along with rapid fall in the cases, and these cases lie within. One incubation period, and this will be suggestive of and this will be suggestive of which type of epidemic? Yeah, fine. This will be suggestive of single point source, single point source epidemic. Fine, single point source epidemic. For example, staph aureus food poisoning. For example, is the staph aureus. Food poison, fine. And if you see, if there is a multiple peaks, if there is a multiple peaks in the curve, okay. And these types of multiple peaks in the curve, along with these cases, which are seen in with these cases, which are seen in multiple incubation period, and these are seen in a case of multiple exposure point source epidemic, and there is no any case to case or Case to case transmission. So, so it is known as what? It is known as multiple exposure points of epidemic. For example, the example is that milkman, like infected milkman, like to the villages. Are the villages they are getting water from the same well? Fine. Are the villages getting water from the same well? Just tell me one answer for a question. Bhopal gas gas tragedy is a which type of epidemic? It is the single exposure point source epidemic. Yeah, it is the Bhopal gas tragedy. It is also this single exposure point source epidemic. Okay, fine. Just remember these two things. We'll move on to this whole chain. You know what is this name of this thing which is used to store the vaccines in the PHC? Answer in the comment section. Yeah. We are getting it correct. It is the ice line refrigerator, or also known as ILR. In this ILR, what is the name of this thermometer we will use? Yeah, it is the dial thermometer. Dial thermometer, which will use in this ILR. And in the ILR, we will keep this heat stable one in the above or in the above racks. Whereas we will keep this free stable one in the below. Fine. And this. Between to maintain this means to know this efficiency of this cold chain, we will keep this thing in between. Fine, 
means which vaccine you will keep in between these two it is what it is the td means you just keep this td vaccine in between these two means you will keep your teradin means you will keep your heart in between this heart and pull or this heat tolerant one uh, and this freeze tolerant one fine you just remember this one and we know with this vaccines there is also one more policy the one more policy is known as open vial policy this open vial policy it will be means it won't be obeyed by few vaccines which are stored under this one like means which are most commonly um, heat sensitive ones fine they are you can remember by this mnemonic as mera rota hua bachcha jija fine you just remember this one fine you just remember this one fine this is this mr vaccine bcg vaccine and je vaccine they won't they won't follow this open vial policy just remember this one fine next one what is this thing which is used in this vaccines what is the name of this one this what is the name of this one you are getting it correct it is the yeah it is the vaccine vial monitor and in the case of vaccine vial monitor you can see means if the inner circle if it is less color than the inner square if it is less color than the outer circle we can use it then we can use in a case of one and two where this if it is equal to or if it is more than the outer circle then we will discard this vaccine fine and this how this vaccine carries looks like this how this vaccine carries looks like and this is what you will keep here which is this ice packs and remember this vaccine carries they can carry up to 6 to 16 to 20 vials okay they can carry up to 16 to 20 vials to the sub centers fine and this ice packs these are the smallest component they are the smallest component of this cold chain and can and they can carry means here one on the back side one they can carry this two vaccines they can carry how many vaccines they can carry two vaccines fine you just remember this Next one, on each year, this they will ask this question on this graph. To remember this graph, just remember about the few numbers. Like remember about the numbers. Fine. Once, like while you are going to your college, means on first year you don't know. Means our main motive in you know, during your first year is to is to study. So while going for the first year, you will carry books along with you. So just remember this birth rate and death rate will be together. Means you and your book. Will be together in the first year. The stage of stage one, it will be always together. But when you know that means not only study matters, you should also enjoy. So from second year, you have just started enjoying, and you are you will just enjoy so that your distance from your book to you will get increased. So you will see this maximum demographics gap in a case of late stage two. Okay. Whereas in the third year, you will be able to realize. you will able to realize this one this just on, only enjoying is not matters you need to study something now till now means in third year also you will be just thinking just you need to study but you didn't start it so you were thinking it's going on so at the end of third year this dg means the contraction of this dg begins at yearly phase of or yearly phase of this stage 3 and in stage 4 you know means only study can help you out in exams nothing will help you out so you started studying from the fourth year and in fifth year you and your books you were sleeping with your books are you and your books are together fine and you are inseparable so there is a negative demographic gap which is seen in a case of stage 5 fine ashor will tell about this important topics in a later later part fine don't worry next if you see this thing next if you see this thing there are few important scales you need to remember fine this is how this scale which is known as what infantometer infantometer looks like and this infantometer which is used to measure this length of the fetus yeah which is used to measure this length of this fetus up to 2 years fine next one what is this name of this scale answer is in the comment section what is this name of this scale answers in the comment section yeah it is known as the 
salter scale it is known as the salter scale which is used to measure the weight of the child next one if you able to see this is how this step this shaky step shaky step look like and this shaky step is used to measure this mid arm circumference it is used to measure this mid arm circumference we know if this mid arm circumference if it is more than 13.5 cm it will be normal then if it is between 12 to 12.5 to 13.5 cm it will be mild to moderate malnutrition whereas if it is less than or if it is follows this red one if it is less than 11.5 cm then it will be a severe malnutrition okay it is a severe malnutrition and you can find this caliper which is known as what is the name of this caliper could you please answer in the chat box they were getting incorrect it is known as the herpen lens caliper which is used to measure this which is used which you can use to measure the subcutaneous just remember this like you can use to measure which one you can use to measure the skin fold thickness when you can use to measure the skin fold thickness fine next one if you see if you see about school health school health will use one type of desks they are known as what is the name of this desk they are known as this negative desks negative type of desks are also known as minus desks you just see this image this is known as this negative or minus types of desks in a school health you need to remember few more points the per capita space for the school school health or in schools it's what it is more than 10 square feet then the natural light in a case of school it will come from the which side it will come from which side it should be coming from the left side or the lateral side fine next one there should be one urinal for how many students answer in the comment box i think so some of you you are not watching this video in live so just if you are not watching this video in live there might be some delay so just click this live option in your uh, youtube so you will you will be in track with the class fine next one there will be one urinal for 60 students and there will be one latrine for how many students for 100 students yeah you are getting it correct fine next one there are few other instruments you just need to you just need to remember first one this is what is this name of this instrument as is in the comment section yeah, it is what it is the kata thermometer it is the kata thermometer this kata thermometer it is used to measure which one it is used to measure this low air velocity it is used to measure the low air velocity next one this is how this glow thermometer looks like this globe thermometer used to measure this mean radiant heat remember this globe thermometer is used to measure the mean radiant heat fine next one what is this thing used to you what is the name of this instrument the name of this instrument it is what it is the sling psychrometer and this sling psychrometer it is used to measure this air humidity fine it is used to measure this air humidity fine you just remember these two things about this instrument it's fine then what is this name of this apparatus which is used to measure this chlorine demand what is this name of this apparatus could you please answer in the comment section waiting for your answers Yeah, you are getting it correct. It is known as what? It is the Horrocks apparatus. It is known as the Horrocks apparatus. And in the case of this apparatus, you need to just remember one more thing. Like you need to just remember one thing, which is what the indicator. The indicator used for this it is the starch iodide. It is the starch iodide. Fine. And it is used to uh, measure this chlorine thing. Fine. Yeah. And this one to estimate this level of chlorine. to estimate this level of chlorine we'll use this instrument which is known as this chloroscope okay is we'll use this chloroscope fine then is about this few instruments you need to remember of then we'll move on to this public health domain and what is this name of this diagram which is drawn in a focus group discussion answer in the comment section
yeah you are getting it correct it is known as what it is known as the sociogram it is known as the sociogram fine it is known as the sociogram and you need to differentiate in a case of this discussions you need to remember just two things one is this symposium and another one is the panel discussion panel discussion just remember this panel discussion it will happen in your tv panels you must be uh, you must be seeing this time type of debates in your tv tv channels in which the speech will be of no specific order remember there will be no specific order of speech and there will be no set speech okay there will be no specific order and no set speech is seen in a case of panel discussion whereas symposium yes for us there will be a set speech and there will be a set speech and there will be a set order in a case of symposium so you just try to differentiate these two things from your question so you will get this things correct fine and this is how this ors demonstrations looks like it's how this ors preparation demonstration looks like. fine yeah i think so you are clear with that we'll move on with the next slide what is this name of this first plant you will able to see could you please name this plant you can see the name yeah you are getting it correct it is the name of this thing it is known as what it is known as this lathyrus sativus and you can remember this this lathyrus sativus the patient will be having this lathy or the stick fine so this is known as this lathyrism okay and this lathyrism the the patient will be having the stages known as this stick stages the patient will be having the stages known as this stick stages fine and this lathyrus lathyrism is happens due to the presence of which toxin what is the name of this toxin which leads to this lathyrism could you please answer in the comment section yeah it is the the toxin it is the boa it is the boa toxin which is being responsible for this lathyrism second one you will able to see this able to see this plant it is known as this argimon mexica this plant is it is being adulterated for this for this mustard oil so if it is adulterated with this mustard oil mustard oil you just remember this mustard oil it is a fluid so it can flow so it can drop even so it will lead to a condition known as epidemic dropsy oil drops so mustard oil leads to this epidemic dropsy and this this flu you can remember this sanguinary nang nary means it's somewhat alternate name for the water so it's because of the toxin known as this sanguinary okay you just remember this one it's because of this toxin known as sanguinary fine next one and next one is a pretty complex image if you want to remember what is this name of this image could be able to recall Yeah, fine. Right, it is the it is the crotal area. It is the crotal area, and this crotal area plant it leads to it will be having this pyrrolidin toxins, pyrrolidin toxins, and this leads to which one? What does this crotal area plant lead to? It lead to endemic ascites. It leads to endemic ascites. I just remember this one. fine next one don't confuse this previous one with the next one next one what you will able to see it is this fungus known as aspergillus flavus and this one produces this aflatoxin and just answer me one question this aflatoxin will leads to which cancer will you able to answer me in the comment section yeah this aflatoxin it will leads to the hepatocellular carcinoma it leads to this hepatocellular carcinoma fine you just remember this next one will learn few things about this mosquito fine few things about this mosquito if you see this mosquito it is how this female anaphelis mosquito looks like and it is how this eggs looks like and it has a some special features fine first remember anaphelis it end with this yes so it is a Sophisticated mosquito. Sophisticated 
mosquito as it is a sophisticated mosquito it won't breed in a normal water so it will breed in a clean water the sophisticated mosquito it will breed in a clean water and it won't sits normally since it is sophisticated it will sits with an angle of it will sits with an angle of 45 degrees and next one since it's a sophisticated mosquito and remember it is a female you know females they are angels so if they are angels and if they are particularly sophisticated angels the angels will be having the wings and this wings of this sophisticated mosquito will be having the spots so they will be having this spots in the wings so just remember spots in the wings and since they are sophisticated most of them they will be single so remember they will lay this single eggs single eggs single eggs like a boat traps okay boat traps and it will be without this siphon tube siphon tube means it will be without the respiratory tube it will be with, without the respiratory tube so it will be always like parallel this larva will be always parallel to the water surface just remember these things about this female anaphylaxis mosquito next one what is the name of this mosquito yeah fine yeah you are getting it correct it is what it is the tiger mosquito it is the tiger mosquito which is what which is what it is the aedes aegypti this is the tiger mosquito which is part which is the aedes aegypti mosquito and this about this aedes aegypti uh, mosquito you just remember it is a shameless mosquito it is the shameless mosquito okay why it is shameless because it will be breeding artificially artificially collected rain water it will breed in the artificially collected rain water and why is it shameless one more reason is that it will lay this cigar cigar shape eggs shape eggs you just remember cigar shape eggs it will be laid by this tiger mosquito next one is our favorite which is this culex culex mosquito to remember about this culex yeah dengue kusu like you to remember about this culex one just remember about a rap singer fine this rap singer what they will do they will make some songs sometimes they means like most of the times the songs are good sometimes it's like kind of making some nuisance so it's a nuisance mosquito and you know this rap singers are this pop singers how they will how they will tell for each questions they will ask why q like that they will ask so remember this rap singers are they will ask q so remember as q lex and they are nuisance mosquitoes and this rap singers they won't sit like a normal person they will be having this hunchback while singing so just remember this hunchbacks will be present in this culex mosquito there will be presence of this hunchback and this rap singers they won't sing alone they will always they sing in a group so they will lay eggs in a cluster fine and they will be always dirty remember they will be always dirty just to remember these things and to know this disease which are being caused by this culex mosquito you might be knowing this mnemonic known as dry chickens chickens dengue rift valley fever yellow fever and chicken wing fine you just remember this this is a mnemonic next one what is this next mosquito what is this next mosquito what is this next mosquito which you will be able to see this long legs this long legs they are seen in this manzonia mosquito manzonia and just remember this manzonia mans are stars so they will be having this long legs and they will lay eggs in a star shaped star clusters stars clusters fine they will lay they will lay these eggs in a star clusters fine next one if you see a head it is the heart and if it doesn't see this head it is the soft to remember this this is caused by the soft just remember this mnemonic known as q r s relapsing fever and q fever it will be caused by this soft fine next one this heart tick remember this heart tick it will cause a disease known as kaizener forest disease kaizener forest disease fine and this heart tick just remember 
most of this disease it will start with tick indian tick typhus tick encephalitis and tick hemorrhagic fever and tularemia and this disease they are caused by this heart tick ever this heart tick this will cause this kfd and this t are tick diseases fine you just remember this about this this vector next one will move on to other vectors like this is how this loves we know this loves it causes this pedaclosis means this hair pedaclosis and with some for some people it's like a pet we know like we raise cats and dogs as pets but some people they will raise this louse as a pet so remember pets pets as a mnemonic louse as a pet so remember this louse will lead to this diseases like pediculosis pediculosis endemic typhus like epidemic typhus relapsing fever and the trench fever and this trench fever fine right? this loss this will leads to this box fine right? next one this is how this red red box looks like which leads to this disease known as chagas disease we know this chagas disease it is even associated with it is even associated with which j conditions yeah you know it is associated with this achalasia cardia it is associated with this achalasia cardia right. next one this is how this sand fly looks like just remember this sand fly they are named fly they are like doctors why they are doctor they are like doctors because doctors they are named as doctors and we are named as free birds but we are not free birds because we'll be tied with ourselves with the responsibilities of our families so because of this responsibilities hanging in the wings there will be small small this things because of this the fly the sand fly would in fly actually so it will hop so remember it's like our doctors because of this responsibilities we could in fly enough will just hop with this things fine just remember this things and the sand fly will leads to this famous disease known as kalaza fine kalaza and it can even leads to this some other cutaneous leishmanias okay so just remember these two things about this sand fly Fine. Yeah, you are getting it correct. Next one. Next one. This is this rat flea. We know this rat flea. This is responsible for this bubonic plague. And just remember one more thing about this rat flea. It will be responsible for this endemic typhus. Okay. In the rat and because endemic type typhus, it will be caused by this rat flea. Whereas this one. epidemic typhus it will be it will be caused by this loss okay loss it will be by this loss just remember fine next one we'll see about this biomedical waste just just a few points fine if you want to remember this biomedical waste the yellow one in just remember pus patty and plaster and we will throw it in pila means pila in hindi it means yellow So just remember, we will throw this pus, putty, and plaster in yellow. Fine. And red. This recyclable ones. This recyclable red, recyclable plastics are this rubber ones. We'll throw in the red. Fine. Next one. White will use for the shots. And blue, it's for the. It's not for the broken heart. It's for the broken glass. Fine. It's for the broken glass. and they will typically used to confuse with this questions like they will ask where you will throw this empty blood bag just remember this one point this empty blood bag the blood bag if it is empty or filled no matters it will be throw in the it will be thrown in the yellow bag just remember this one point fine and just this about this biomedical waste management fine next one will move on to this point, which is the disaster management this how this look of this disaster management looks like where multiple people are from multiple systems or multiple things they are coming together and they are joining hands and helping people so this is how this logo of this disaster management looks like fine and this things disaster management initially it is it is having this cycle initially there will be disaster and there will be response by the team and after this response they will do this rehabilitation and recovery next will do this prevention for this next next disaster 
and will mitigate the things which are caused in the previous disaster and will be prepared for the next one and this is known as this disaster cycle and just remember about this disaster management this chair person the chair person for this disaster management is who answer in the comment section who is the chair person of this disaster management it is our prime minister yeah, you are getting it correct and this nodal officer or this nodal office for this disaster management is will be at which level will be it will be at the district levels it will be at the district level remember next one about this thing it is about this triage you know triage this triage is used to classify the classify the cases based on their severity of injury and the survival survival fine this means like we know black means black means they are moribund patients and red they need some urgent referral whereas yellow they they can be delayed whereas green they are ambulatory ambulatory they can ask you a question where you will use this reverse triage this reverse triage is used in which conditions in which this green and this yellow one they are given more priority or the minor injuries they are given more priority where you will use this reverse triage answer in the comment section yeah you are getting it correct it is seen in a case of wars in a case of war we use this reverse triage fine next one will move on to this biostatistics component and in biostatistics this is how this normal this is how this normal normal curve looks like whereas in the middle you will be able to see this mean equal to median is equal to is equal to move and it is this normal standard deviation curve it will be in bell shape it will be in bell shape and we know with the standard deviations you just need to know cram this few numericals if there is a yes standard deviation of 1 it will include around 80 Five percentage of these variables are the eighty-five percentage of these values. Whereas if it is two, it will include around how many? Means it will be not, sorry, it's not sixty-five. It is the sixty-eight. Sorry for it. Next one. If it is standard deviation of two, it will include around ninety-five percentage of these values. Whereas if it is standard deviation of three, it will include around ninety-nine percentage of these values. Fine. This is about the standard deviation. And the most questions they are being repeatedly tested. in your exams is about this qness to remember this qness you will always you will always get confused you just draw this graph from here it is 10 20 30 and 40 where there is a maximum one if you see this point means if you see this point of if you see this tail towards the maximum side it is this positively skewed graph are also known as right skewed one right right skewed one Or whereas, if you see this towards the lesser one, it is the negatively skewed one. And in this such cases, they will give this graph, and they will ask to ask to choose the correct option about this mean, median, and mode. Just remember these things: mean, median, and mode. And if you see this mean, median, and mode, this median it will be always in middle. Just remember this negative skew. Negative skew it is also known as left skewed one. Just remember this L and make it like this. If you see this thing, the highest point. If you make like this, the highest point will be more. Means if you see this thing, it is ten, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. The highest point it is the twenty-five, which is the more. Whereas median it will be in the middle, and this mean it will be having this lowest value. And this one will be opposite in a case of right skewed one. We see this right skewed. If you see this right skew, in which this mean, median, and mode, you'll able to see this thing, which will be more. You can see this graph to point out this median will be having this value around twenty, median it will be having around fifty, this mode will be having around twelve. So the highest point in a case of right skew it is the mean. So you try to don't try to cramp. You will you will be forgetting in your exams. So try to remember with some tricks so that you will get. to this answer with lesser amount of time fine we'll move on to the next part this is about this graph like what is this one is it histogram or the bar chart yeah remember if you write this h and if you make this graph 
you can able to see that all of them they are attached. So this type of attached unit is the histogram. And if you if you mark some line in this histogram, it is known as which one? Answer in the comment section. They were getting it correct. It is known as what? It is known as the frequency polygon. And if you see this curve, curve in the histogram, it is known as the frequency curve. Then it is known as the frequency curve. Fine. Next one. In the case of bar chart, it will be placed separately. This is how this bar chart looks like. And in bar chart, even there are a few different types. If there is component within, it is known as this component bar chart. And if there is two or means one or two more, it is known as this multiple bar charts. Multiple bar charts. So you just remember this. Fine. Next one. You see this line diagram. Means it will just show you this trends of events. It will show you the trends of events. Just remember this line diagram will show you this trends of events and it can go down. Line diagram can do go down. Whereas this OQ, remember, if you give your love to someone, you will be keep growing. So if you give, it will be keep growing. Means you will be keep growing. So you will never come down. So this OGU, it is a cumulative, it is a cumulative frequency. So you won't see any dip. There will be some flattening. Sometimes you will be disheartened, but you won't feel though because you are just giving your knowledge to someone or you are giving your love to someone. So it will be always rising. Sometimes it will be flat. So don't worry. So this, if you see this thing, it is the OGU. Fine. Next one. This is how this scatter diagram look like. And what is the name of this chart? It is known as which chart? Answers in the comment section. Yeah, we're getting it correct. It is known as the pie chart. It is known as the pie chart. And this one is known as, it's written, it is the stem and leaf chart. It is known as the stem and leaf chart. Fine. And this is known as this funnel plot. This is known as, this is known as this funnel plot. And this is known as the funnel plot. What is the name of this thing? Are you able to see this box and this whisker? I already answer for this question. What is the name of this chart? Answer in the comment section. Right, it is what it is there. Box and whisker plot. It is the box and whisker plot. Just right. Next one, if you're able to see this, how this forest plot looks like. Like mostly we'll, we'll use to see this study designs, like this forest plot. Fine. They were getting it right. Just and one more thing. This is how this iceberg means. If there is a carriers, if there is an invisible carriers, we'll just call it as iceberg phenomena. And we know three diseases. They won't show this. Show this iceberg phenomena. What are the three diseases? Answer in the comment section. Yeah, they are remembered by this mnemonic known as MTR. They are this measles, tetanus, and rabies. If there is any such case of this following diseases, it will be manifested or it will be clinically visible. Fine. And it won't be, it won't be as a invisible cases. Fine. Just remember this point about this disease. Fine. Next one. In each of the following condition, you will see this macular papular rash along this part known as oblique spot. <coughs> In which of the following diseases you will see this thing? Yeah, you will see in a condition known as measles. Let me ask you a question from the yesterday session. What is this name of this JN cell you will see in the case of measles? Answer in the comment section. Yeah, you are getting it correct. It is known as big cell. It is known as this Warthin Finkel D giant cells. Fine. And if you see this pleomorphic rash, pleomorphic rash, which is like Due on rose petals appearance, rose petals appearance, due on rose petal appearance, and this is seen in a case of chicken pox. Seen in a case of chicken pox. Fine, you just remember. And just remember this same thing. We know there is a row in rose, there is a petal. So this chicken pox follows this centripetal arrangement, centripetal arrangement of rashes. A centripetal eruption of this rashes. Fine. Next one, if you see this image, you'll be able to see some rash. If there is some kind of meningitis, meningitis associated with some rash, which organism you will think of? Answer in the comment, comment section. 
they were getting it correct it, it is suggestive of neisseria meningitis meningitis fine they were getting it correct okay next one which of the following disease which is being banned means because which of the following disease leads to this ban of this thing known as step wells or which disease is being transmitted by this step wells it is known as dracon culiosis which is being a, which is being removed from india and this is it is spread by this step wells and it is which is caused by this gunia bugs gunia bugs fine you just remember this and which of the following which of the following this is in which this organism this pig will act as a amplifying host which of the following this is this pig will act as a amplifying host host answer in your comment section it is what it is there japanese encephalitis which of the following this is it is known as this monkey's disease it's not monkey's box i'm asking about the monkey's disease yeah just remember this case in our forest disease it is also known as monkey's disease and it is present it is spread by which tick by the soft tick or the hard tick we know soft tick the pneumonic is qrs there will be q fever and this relapsing fever will be seen in case of soft tick whereas this kfd and all tick fevers they will be seen in they will be seen with this hard tick this will be seen with this hard tick fine just remember this Fine. Yes, you remember this S J kids one. For this S J kids, we just know this. Remember, just know this mnemonic known as Great Girls. We are blue, red, yellow bats. For this, one thing you don't need to remember is that yellow. Low means it it will be given for this lower abdominal. Fine. It will be given for the lower abdominal pain. Fine. It will be given for the lower abdominal pain. Next one, this gray kid. You will start initially start with alphabetically. It will be because of this U, urethral discharge. Next one, this girls. This green. It's because of it's for this vaginitis. And this one, white, blue, and red. All of these things for this ulcers. But first, initially two. It's for this. bacterial ulcers first one will be for the penicillin sensitive one next one will be for the penicillin resistant one and red one is for this viral ulcers fine this b for bats it's for this inguinal this black one for this inguinal bubus okay this is remember about this sj kids fine these are all about this sj kids next one will move on to this graph which of the following condition will follow this 50 percentage rule Is that the following condition which follows the fifty percent rule? Yeah, you know hypertension. It will follow this fifty percent rule. Fine. What is the name of this phenomena which is done by this BP blood pressure? Answer in the comment section. Waiting for you. Yeah, it is known as what? It is known as this tracking phenomena. Tracking phenomena means the hypotension. It will remain hyp. The hypotension patient. It will remain. Hypotensive throughout their life, whereas hypertensive patients are this increased BP will remain increased throughout their life. Yes, you know. Fine. This about these two things. Next one, film. We'll just move on to this logo. Just it's about this cramming of about these things. And this is how this logo of this National Health Mission, where you will able to see this sun. Okay, the National Health Mission, you will able to see this sun. And this is how this PM Jan Arogya Yojana, all also known as this Aishman Bharat. Means wherever there is a ice, means you will be able to see these leaves. Fine, Aishman Bharat program. It will offer, uh, offer this insurance of five lakhs per family for around ten crore families. And just remember this one point, which is being repeatedly tested. There will be no limit. There will be low, no limit on family members. Family members. And this is how this NTB National TB Elimination Program. NTP looks like logo looks like where you can see this lines okay NTP program and is how this dots looks like which is which 
tells about this pura course and this pakka ilaj right and there is a yeah and there is a one more online portal this online portal it is known as the nick shay nick shay remember this nick shay there you will see this nick nick shay nick shay the nick shay there you will see this nick shay right, it is the free upt or free pregnancy testing kits upt kits it is the nick shay is the nist it is the nist just remember fine don't confuse with this nick shay with the nist fine next one in the case of jandan yojana you will able to see this rupee sim rupee sim fine next one what is this logo representative here represents as seen in the comment section yeah it is what it is this icds icds who is the heart of this icds one is doctors are the heart of icds no this anganwadi workers they are the heart of this this icds program in which will deliver half of their daily protein needs protein needs and one third of their calorie needs calorie needs for three kind of people for for around 6 to 72 months time plus malnourished child and the pregnant females and the pregnant females will give this half calorie half of their daily protein requirement and one third of their daily calorie requirement fine just remember this thing yeah, this is about this thing next one will move on to this portion of the it just this another name just this another name of this midday meal program it is ensure to get rid of this malnutrition free india by 2020 just remember this one next one is this nfp national family program which will be in this triangle to make you <laughs> means like just to be controlled in a triangle fine this how this jssk also known as janani shishu suraksha karyakram just remember don't confuse this jssk with jss in the case of jssk you will see this all free free will be given in this for both janani and the shishu there will be free diagnostics drugs delivery diet and the blood transfusion and delivery and the complications just remember and she is the janani and she is the and it is the shishu fine next one is the suman suman it is what on 9th of every month like there will be a free obstetrics check in the private clinic fine that's about this suman next one is this anemia muk program in this anemia muk program it will follow a 6 into 6 group at 6 into 6 strategy and we'll give this iron folic acid tablets to the to from child to the adults and in the case of child from 5 to 9 years 5 to 9 years we'll give around 40 40 micrograms of folic acid means 40 40 mg of iron and 400 micrograms of folic acid and in the case of 10 to 19 years and in pregnancy and lactation we'll give how much we'll give how much um folic acid and iron will give will give 60 mg of iron and 500 micrograms but the differentiation here comes based on the color so if you just remember during your childhood who used to pick clothes for you yeah, your mother used to pick clothes for you so you know girls like or mothers like the pink color so it will be the pink color jacket and then especially girls they used to be in a pink color but just remember this boys are this adolescents boys love which color boys love blue color so it will be given as a blue color tablets it will be given in blue color tablets fine this is somebody will be given in a blue color tablets next one in the case of pregnancy and lactation pregnancy and lactation it will be given as a red color tablets it is given as a red color tablets and one more thing both of them they are given in weekly whereas during pregnancy and lactation they are given in a daily doses they are given in a daily doses fine this how this national vector brown disease control programs looks like where you will see this mosquito means which is being protected from this population fine and we know the most common vector brown disease it is the malaria whereas the most common um, like vector brown viral disease it is the dengue fine this is how this lotus one which is seen in a case of nlep program and this is how this call you will see in a case of nacco 
national aids control programs and in this naco will give condoms to whom will give condoms to the females which is actually what which is the fc2 types of condoms to this this females fine next one is this suraksha clinic in which will give this syndromic management with this kids syndromic management with this kids fine next one is how this mission indra janus initially will used to means we, we used for this seven vaccine preventable disease for the seven rainbow colors later we uh, intensified this program so the seven uh, vaccine preventable disease are this bcg vaccine for tb opv dpt then this hepatitis b and the measles hepatitis b and the measles and about this polio we just remember there is a one more program known as this switch program which happened which converted this tri this trivalent vaccine into the divalent which of the following thing which of the following variant is removed is the p2 removed or the p3 removed answer in the comment section it is the p2 which is being removed which is responsible for this vaccine vaccine derived polio paralysis fine we we'll just remember this p2 is being removed and now we use this divalent or the bivalent opv which is which will be consisting of one and three fine yeah you are getting it correct then we'll move on to a few other programs which is this national program for control of blindness in this what is the most common cause of blindness in india what is the most common cause of blindness Yeah, you are getting incorrect. Is the character fine? What is the most common? Phoenix or Kelly? What is the most common? What is the most common? Which like deficiency which leads to this blindness? What is the most common deficiency? It is the vitamin. Just remember the as a point. Fine. Next one. This is how this. national program for this control of this cancer diabetes and this cvs disease is actually what non communicable diseases and you must use this app which is known as this arogya setya fine and this is how this sun the sun we saw in two things one we saw in a case of national health mission next one we are seeing in a case of this one which is the i means national identification control program fine in this there is a two levels of this identification like at, at the level of production the iodine concentration must be at 30 ppm whereas at the level of consumer it must be around 15 ppm fine this how this logo of this national catrack code means national health insurance looks like we just know fine next one this is the logo of this esic and in esic you just remember one one just only one thing just employer contributes higher around 3.75 percentage of their wages whereas this employee pays less is 3.25 sorry it is 3.25 it is the 3.25 whereas he pays 0.75 with cumulative 4 percent and just remember only one thing which is this one more thing which is this enhanced enhanced benefit enhanced sickness benefit it is done just remember this hands means you keep hands to do some surgery you do tubectomy and vasectomy you just keep hands and do the surgery and you take leave for tubectomy for 14 days and here vasectomy is for 7 days and you just remember. next one this is how this idsp logo looks like where we'll use this th three forms one it is known as syndromic one next one is known as present like presumptive diagnostic one next one is the lab confirm like yes p l syndromic then presumptive then the lab confirm one presumptive it is be done by the medical officer whereas this one will be done by the health worker okay lab confirm it is a lab confirmed diagnosis so then you just differentiate between this uj ujawala ujawala it's like awala means ujawala it's for for prevention of this child trafficking and this ujala means the ujala white means it's for this brightness means it's the led and next one it is this ujwala which is for this gas one, gas cylinder one. next one if you see this leaf it is somewhat related to this ayurveda of the ayush so it is the logo of this ayush ayush fine and this is this nrga one 
which is used for this unskilled labor unskilled labor next one it is the lakshya lakshya it is used to ensure or to improve the labor room qualities it is used to improve the labor room qualities just remember this one it is used to improve this labor room qualities fine next one it is just just fisa like fssi logo just remember this one fine with this yeah with this we are um, we are completed with this psm fine so just remember success won't come as an accident like for few people it, it may come as a luck but for us it will be coming with the efforts which we put so just prepare for your success and keep your mindset that you will succeed and believe in yourself if you believe in yourself you will succeed in your life okay with the same motivation we'll start with this aptalmo fine this aptalmo it will take exactly around 20 to 30 minutes we'll wind up the session in around 20 to 30 minutes just take a short break for 2 minutes we'll we'll connect in another 2 minutes fine it's okay fine Yeah, fine. We are done with our two minutes break. With this, we'll start our after the discussion. Like it will be, I don't like it will take around twenty to thirty minutes, and we'll try to cut it up. And it will be more easy. And it's your part. You should be answering for this question because it will be easy questions, which like most of the things you know of because you will be like blasted with already after the gym images. Fine. First question. First, if you see, what is the name of this chart? Could you please answer in the comment section? What is the name of this first chart? First chart? Yeah, correct. It is known as what? It is known as the Snellen chart. It is known as the Snellen chart. And it is given for this. And this Snellen chart, it is used for the individuals who are literate. Whereas who are illiterate will use this chart known as landlord's rings, are also known as tumbling e charts. Like we use these two more charts known as landlord's rings and the tumbling e chart okay we'll just show and ask the patients to show the opening of the c or else we'll show this opening of this like where this e or the trishul looks like fine next one if if it is an adult they may obey whereas in a case of pediatric patients who's not able to read things we'll use this picture one what is the name of this picture chart we'll use in a case of pediatrics could you please answer in the comment section 
they were getting it correct it is known as what it is known as this allen star it is known as the allen star fine and next one it is this more updated version for this um, chart which is known as this etdrs chart means which is actually used for means yearly treatment which this etdr stands for yearly treatment and diabetic retinopathy study means they use this chart and it's being widely available now. next one what is this chart which is used for testing your contrast sensitivity what is the name of the chart answer in the comment section you yeah, find you are getting it correct it is what it is known as this pelly robbins chart it is known as this pelly robbins chart and it is used to check this contrast sensitivity fine what is this name of this chart which is used to measure this are used to check this color vision what is the name of this chart it is known as what it is known as this ishihara chart it is known as the ishihara chart it is known as the ishihara chart okay we just remember this about this chart i am getting it correct fine we'll move on to other few ophthalmological instruments what is the name of this thing yeah this is what this is the slit lamp and in this slit lamp you are able to appreciate this anterior chamber and the anterior segment means anterior chamber posterior segment and the lens you can easily appreciate with this slit lamp bio microscope whereas to see this posterior segment not the posterior chamber posterior segment we usually means posterior chamber we can see with this normal slit lamp bio microscope whereas to see this posterior segment next to the lens we'll use this 90d diopters 90d diopter lens okay to see this posterior segment okay for example you are in a emergency or you are sitting in a opd whereas the case of vitreous hemorrhage came you want to see this posterior posterior aspect so you will use this 90d lens in the slit lamp fine in a case of emergency or opd segments right next one what is this procedure which is being done what is the name of this thing yeah this is what this is this goldman applineation tonometry tonometry which is used to measure this intraocular pressure just remember what is this is this direct ophthalmoscope or indirect one yeah if you able to see this dial it is used to see this magnified view view and it is just a handheld one so it is what it is what it is the direct ophthalmoscope it is the direct ophthalmoscope and remember this direct ophthalmoscope it will give you a virtual error it will give you a virtual error and the magnified image magnified image and it can provide up to 15 times of magnification it can provide up to 15 times of magnification so you can see just the center of retina you can see just you will able to appreciate only this optic disc because it's highly magnified view right you will able to appreciate this optic disc macula and the fovea okay fine you will able to appreciate these three things next is how this indirect ophthalmoscopy looks like indirect ophthalmoscopy looks like for with this indirect ophthalmoscopy we will able to see this posterior chamber just remember for this direct and indirect ophthalmoscopy to be done you need to you need to dilate the patient okay you need to dilate the patient and you need to see next one the use with this indirect ophthalmoscopy you will able to see this image which which is being formed as real inverted and the magnified one okay and in this indirect ophthalmoscope what is the diopter of the lens you will use answer in the comment section yeah you will use which one you will use this plus 20 diopters lens and with this indirect ophthalmoscope you will able to see this periphery of the retina which is also known as this ora serrata ora serrata which is you can see this periphery of retina fine for any retinal detachment you can look right next one this is how this four mirror means in gonioscopy it's a different type this is how this four mirror gonioscope looks like gonioscope looks like what is this use of this gonioscope yeah you are getting it correct we'll use this gonioscope to see this to differentiate this acute angle closure glaucoma with this open angle glaucoma fine we'll just remember this two things fine next one we'll move on to this eye muscles and its movements first of all we know there are seven extraocular muscles you know there are four rectus superior rectus medial rectus lateral rectus and inferior rectus superior oblique inferior oblique and one 
which is this LPS leviator called the superior. All of most of them they are supplied by this third cranial nerve, except LR6, LR6 and SU4, and LR6 and SU4. And if there is any palsy of this nerves, if there is any palsy of this nerve, could you please be able to tell me which nerve palsy is this looking for us? Answer in the comment section. Wait if you have answers. Yeah. This is what? This is the LR palsy. If you can able to see, this is means like divided somewhat medially. And during this side, he is able to see normally. It means this medial rectus works perfectly normal. Whereas this lateral rectus, which is not being working, means there is a LR6, means there is a sixth cranial nerve damage. Just remember it is the sixth cranial nerve damage. It will show you appearance known as eye in and face out. Eye in and face out appearance means the eye will be in so that you will bring your face out to see this image. So it is known as eye in and face out image. Next one, what is the what do you think the nerve will be damaged in this case? And why he is pulling up? You can see, you can see the eye will be means the, the eye you can see it is down and out. This down and out eye along with this ptosis. This happens in which cranial nerve damage? It happens in this third cranial nerve damage. It happens in this third cranial nerve damage. Because of this ptosis, you need to pull up the eyelids. You need to pull up the eyelids. So that's standard. Next one, for this, to remember this fourth cranial nerve palsy, just remember one, just only one thing. The, in the case of first fourth cranial nerve, you know, yes, so for superior oblique, it's involved in the case of fourth cranial nerve palsy and the patient will be tilting his head to the opposite side because he will be, it's oblique, so he will be tilting this, tilting his head to this opposite shoulder. Just remember, it is the head tilt on opposite shoulder. Fine, you just remember this only one more. Next one, to know this squints or this trophians, we'll use this test known as Hitchbuck test. Hitchbuck checks, well, how are this means how this light reflex affects or if it appears on the outer aspect will it will be of isotropia means it will be of the opposite one which is being damaged so you can see the light is on the more lateral aspect so it will be isotropia whereas this light which falls on the more inner aspect so it is what it is the exotropia and if it is falls below it is what it is this hypertropia if it is above it will be hypotropia fine and we know tropia means tropians they are this manifest manifest screens. means they you can see the change in the screen just remember fine just these things about this things next one we'll come to this more interesting parts in this more interesting parts if you see in each of the following conditions you will see this harner tantus spots along with this cobblestone mucosa and there can be a history of ropey discharge ropey discharge even given what do you it will suggest you of which condition answer in the comment section yeah you are getting it correct it will be seen in a case of very little character conjectivities which type of hypersensitivity is this yeah it is there type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. It is what? It is the type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Can you just remember? And to treat this condition, you can give either sodium chromoglycate means, but now they nowadays will give valapatidine. Valapatidine. Okay, fine. And what is the other name of this VKC? What is the other name of this VKC? Yeah, it is known as what? It is known as the spring cutter. In which of the following conditions, you will be able to see these pits, you will be able to see these pits along with this pulse lines and this sago grain follicles. In which condition you will see these three things? Herbert spits, pulse lines and which condition you will see? Yeah, you will see in which condition? You will see in the conditions of trachoma. I forgot to tell you, in a case of VKC, you will be able to see this shield ulcer also. Shield ulcer also. And you just remember, you can see this 
shield ulcer also fine this is this will be suggest you of this trachoma what is the name of the strategy will use in a case of trachoma answer in the comment section yeah you will use this safe strategy you will use this safe strategy fine you will use this safe strategy next one you will see this you will see this type of conjunctivitis okay and what is this name of this type conjunctivitis this one is this fictinola conjunctivitis which is actually what it is the manifestation of tb in the sclera and it is a which type of hypersensitivity reaction if you know it is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction it is a type 4 hypersensitivity reaction just remember about this only one point you need to remember fine next one what is this thing what is this thing don't confuse this with fictinol along with this terigium the next one it is the terigium terigium and in the case of terigium it is actually what it is the elastotic degeneration this the elastotic degeneration of this conjunctiva this is the elastotic degeneration of this conjunctiva and in a case of terigium if there is any iron deposition and it will form this kind of lines and what is this name of this line known as answer in the comment section yeah they are known as what they are known as this stokers line they are known as this stokers line. and they are known as the stokers line this is about sterigium in stokers line in fact and there is a history of washing contact lens in water there is a history of washing this contact lens in the water and now he is presenting with this ring shaped ulcer which ulcer is suggestive of what is the organism responsible for this it is what it is the acanthamoeba ulcer it is the acanthamoeba Is the acanthamoeba balls fine? It is the acanthamoeba balls fine. Next one. In which of the following ulcer you will able to see this mostly of single well demarcated, single well demarcated ulcer? Yeah, you will see in a case of which ulcers? Yeah, you will see in a case of bacterial ulcer. You will see in a case of bacterial ulcer. fine you will see in a case of bacterial ulcer fine next one what is the most common cause of bacterial ulcer which bacteria the most common cause it is the pseudomonas just remember don't confuse this bacterial with the fungal ulcer in the case of fungal ulcer you will able to means like in bacterial ulcer you can see this hypopian and but you can hear this here see this thing which is known as this first collection in sanitary chamber it is known as hypopian and along with this feathery ulcer you can see you, you, you couldn't see this margins so it is what it is this feathery margins you can see this feathery margins along with you can see this type of satellite nodules yeah you can see this satellite nodules this it will be and there will be a history of trauma with vegetative matter and it will be suggestive of which ulcer it will be suggestive of it will be suggestive of this our favorite fungal ulcer or if a farmer who is having this ulcer it will be mostly suggestive of this fungal ulcer next one this is how this viral keratitis or this viral ulcer looks like fine this is how this viral keratitis or this viral dendritic ulcer like a dendrites you can see this dendrites is being flowing this dendritic ulcer looks like fine next one what is this name of this sign you will see in a case of keratoconus yeah what is the name of this sign it is known as this munson sign you will see in a case of keratoconus you will see in a case of keratoconus and this remember for this treatment of this keratoconus we can use this collagen collagen cross linking means this this is this is yet to be as so just have this look on this image what you will do is we'll just scrap this epithelium of this cornea well once we scrap this epithelium okay once we scrap this epithelium then we'll put this riboflavin once we put this riboflavin it will cause cross linking and it will strengthen this cornea and it is known as what it is known as this collagen cross linking and means like once we put this riboflavin we'll put will expose to this uva type of radiation okay 
we will a type of radiation fine and it is how this collagen translating is being done fine you just remember you just see this image and you just remember fine next one what is the name of this triangle it is known as this alls triangle it is known as this alls triangle because of this precipitation of this keratic precipitates in a form of triangle so it is known as what it is known as this alls triangle and this is how this mutton fat cap cap is looks like this is how this mutton fat big big mutton fat looks like fine you just remember next one in a case of this uv it is you will see this festooned or this irregular pupils looks like this is how this festooned pupil you can see this you can see our pupil which is regular and it is round in shape whereas this irregular pupils they are known as what festooned pupil fine and if you see this thing it occurs as a complication of this uv it is what is what you will able to see it is this senechi it is this actually it is the posterior senechi means this adhesion between this between this lens and uveal tract means are mainly from the to the iris so it is this posterior initial senechi and if there is posterior senechi it can leads to which one of the following condition yeah just remember this festooned pupil can results this posterior synechi can results in complicated cataract cataract or a secondary cataract it can results in whereas anterior synechi it can results in angle closure glaucoma okay it can results in just remember it can results in glaucoma okay it can results in glaucoma okay fine this is about you need to remember about this you wait is just remember one more thing known as headlight in fog appearance is seen in a case of vitreitis by this toxoplasma by this toxoplasma is you can able to see this headlight in fog appearance fine this is about this uat is you remember next we'll move on to this cataract if you see this cataract this is how this mature intumescent intumescent cataract looks like this is how this mature intumescent cataract look like and just remember one point about this mature into medicine cataract this into medicine cataract it will swell up when the because of this 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 into medicine cataract it will swell up when it swells up it will occlude this anterior angle so it can results in phagomorphic glaucoma it can results in phago phagomorphic glaucoma so remember this mature cataract can results in phagomorphic glaucoma next one if you see this one this fallen this fallen one this is actually what it is the hypermature cataract or just a type of means morganian morganian cataract means in which the lens nucleus is fallen and this one can rupture and can results in phagolytic glaucoma phagolytic glaucoma glaucoma this is the two points yeah you are getting it correct fine that's awesome could you able to see this image an answer means what type of cataract does it looks like yeah you are getting it correct it is what it is the posterior subcapsular cataract it is how the posterior subcapsular cataract and just remember one point this posterior subcapsular cap subcapsular cataract can results in the maximum visual handicap okay handicap Just remember this one. Next one, there are few types of special cataract you need to remember. Just this is how this snowflake, snowflake cataract, which will be seen in a case of diabetes mellitus. This is how this Christmas tree cataract you will see in a case of myotonic dystrophy. So you will see this Christmas tree, and where you will see this sunflower cataract. Answer in the chat box. Where you will see this sunflower cataract first? Yeah, you were. You will see this sunflower cataract in a case of Wilson's disease. Wilson's disease. What is this cataract? It is what it is. You can. You don't confuse this sunflower with this rosette. It is what it is. The rosette cataract. Rosette shaped cataract. 
which you will see in a case of traumatic. She will see in a case of traumatic cataract. Fine, we just remove. Yeah, that's it. And in the case of Marfan syndrome, you can see this lens. This location it is known as ectopia lent lentis. Ectopia lentis means in a case of Marfan, it is the superior temporal dislocation. Whereas in a case of homocystinuria, it is the inferior median, inferior median. Ectopia like this. Fine, it is true. Fine. Next one. What is this procedure which is being done? Yeah, it is what it is there. Means it is in a circular motion, but tearing the capsule. So it is what it is there. Capsulorexis. It is the capsulorexis. And this is the forceps you can use for this capsulorexis. And to stain this capsule, what is the dye? You will use in a case of capsulorexis and which tray you will use to stain the capsule? Answer in the chat box. Yeah, you are getting it correct. It is the triptan blue. It is the triptan blue. Yeah. You, need to, you need to differentiate just two things in one, just few more things. One is this is how this hydro dissection. Remember, it is hydro dissection, it is not hydro. Delineation. Okay, it is not hydro delineation. Remember, there is a N. If there is a N, means we are separating the nucleus. And if there is no N, we are separating this capsule from the nucleus. Just remember. Okay, if there is a N, we are separating from the nucleus. If there is no N, we are doing hydro dissection. Fine. Yeah, you are getting it correct. Next one, if you are able to see these complications of this cataract, if you see these complications of this cataract, what is this name of this? First of all, tell me what is this name of this thing which happens after, after this cataract because of this lens epithelial cell migration? Yeah, it is what it is the posterior capsular opacification. It is known as what? It is known as this posterior capsular opacification, which is also known as secondary cap. Okay, fine. It is the posterior capsular opacification. And in such cases, you can see these types of pearls known as L chain. Pulse. You can see one more ring, so the somas ring and elching pearls, they are seen in a case of posterior capsular cataract. And it is one of the complications. Whereas you can see one more complication, which is what? Which is the cystoid macular edema. And cystoid macular edema after a cataract surgery. And this, what is this investigation? It is the OCT. It is the OCT being done. And you can see this macula, which is being hunched back because of this, because of this fluid collection, because of this fluid collection, fine. And it is known as what? It is, happens as a complication of this cataract, which is what? Which is the cystoid macular edema. And what is this name of syndrome? You will see in this, which is name, what is the name of the special syndrome? This cystoid macular edema is named as, could you answer in the chat box? It is known as, yeah, it is known as what? It is known as this Irwin Gas Syndrome. Irwin Gas Syndrome. This is known as the Irwin Gas Syndrome. Just remember, it is the cystoid macular edema after the cataract surgery. Fine. And this is how this posterior chamber IOL, which is the monofocal one, looks like. And this is how this multifocal IOL, which is the posterior chamber IOL, looks like. Just remember. This two things. Fine. Next one. We know there are st stages of diabetes mellitus. The first change you will see in a case of diabetes mellitus, it is the presence of microaneurysm. Microaneurysms. And it will progress into two stages. First, it is known as NPDR stage. And next one is the PDR. Means NPDR means non proliferative diabetic retinopathy. In NPDR, you will see just some exudates. Whereas in a case of PDR, PDR, you will be able to see this neovascularization which is being, being happening. So the most common complication or most common cause of vision loss in a case of NPDR. What is the most common cause of vision loss in a case of NPDR stage of diabetes retinopathy?
Just remember, in the case of NPDR stage, you will see this one. In the case of NPDR stage, you will see this clinically significant macular edema leading to the vision loss. Whereas in the case of proliferative diabetic retinopathy, the, the cause of vision loss, it is the, it is which one? Answer the comment section. Yep, it is the veterous hemorrhage. Okay. Whereas you will see this soft exudates in the, this the types of soft exudates you will see in a case of hypertensional diabetes, both of them. Fine. Next one, for this proliferative diabetic retinopathy, you will do this thing with the laser known as pan-retinal photocoagulation. You will do this thing known as pan-retinal photocoagulation. Fine. Yeah, you are getting it correct. Fine. With this same thing, we'll move on to the next one. If you see this cherry red spot, cherry red spot, there is a cherry on the cake, it will be seen in a case of CRAO. And you will see this tomato splash, splash appearance, it will be seen in a case of CRBO. And this one, pizza pie appearance, pizza pie appearance, it will be seen in a case of which condition? It will be seen in a case of CMV retinitis. Okay, CMV retinitis. And the CMV retinitis is most commonly seen in HIV patient, HIV patient which are having the CD4 count less than 50. Which are having the CD4 counts having less than 50. And if you see this thin blood vessels and peripheral retinal pigmentations along with this pale optic disc, they'll be suggest of which condition? Answer in the common box. Yeah, it is suggestive of retinitis pigmentation. Fine. Yeah, you are getting it correct. Fine. And this is how this fluorescent angiography looks like. Means in fluorescent angiography, we'll give this dye in the anticubital fossa. And we'll start image, means we'll start our imaging with the fundus camera. And once this dye reaches this fundus, we'll be able to see these vascularities. And if there is any fundal leak, this fundal leak can happen because of neovascularization. And this is how we can confirm. This is how a normal one look, looks like. But in the case of proliferative diabetic adenopathy, you can see this dye which is being leaked. Fine? Because of new vascularization. What is this one? It is written here only. It is a tone open. Tone open means which in which you can, it is used to measure this IOP. Okay? Tone open. And with this tone open, you can measure this IOP even in a irregular pattern. Okay? The irregular curve. Just one point about this tone open. Fine. Next one. What is this one? The child presenting with the child presenting with photophobia, lacrimation, and sometimes with blepharospasm. What it is suggestive of? It is suggestive of which one? It is suggestive of yeah. You are guessing it correct. It is the congenital glaucoma, and it is due to the presence of this one membrane. What is the name of this membrane? Yeah, it is known as the Barkans membrane. Remember, it is known as the, it is due to the presence of this Barkans membrane. Okay, fine. And in a case of glaucoma, you will see this one. There will be a normal cup to disc ratio. It will be how much? It will be 0.3 is to one. Whereas in a case of glaucoma, this will be increased, it will be around more than or equal to 0.7. This is how you will see in a case of glaucoma. And this one, stony, streaming, cornea, along with this congested one, congested cornea, you will see in a case of, and means congested cornea along with this mid-dilated pupil. In which type of glaucoma you will see this one? Answer in the comment section. Yeah, you are getting it correct. You will see in a case of acute congestive glaucoma. And in the case of acute congestive glaucoma, to treat this one, we'll do this procedure known as laser iridotomy. Laser iridotomy. We'll do this procedure. Fine. And just remember, this acute congestive glaucoma, it can occur in both eyes. So we'll do prophylactic laser iridotomy in both eyes. Okay. In one eye followed by other. Fine. You just remember. Yeah. You are getting it correct. You are absolutely asked. Fine. Just keep the shoes. Fine. We'll finish in another five to ten minutes. Fine. We are about to end the session. Fine. You will see this continuous lacrimations are discharged. 
things. Just there is a mismatch in the slide. In a case of glaucoma, initially, this is how this blind spot looks like. There will be extension of this blind spot. Then there will be a scotoma, which is forming near to the blind spot, which is known as this paracentral scotoma. And later, it will form a stepping, known as this nasal stepping. And next, it will form an arc, known as arcuate scotoma. And later, it will completely covered except leaving a small part leading to this condition known as tunnel, tunnel vision and later will completely obstruct the vision okay Le leading to the complete vision loss fine you understand that next one if there is a continuous lacrimation from the childhood it is because of this nld obstruction congenital dacryo cystitis this is known as the acquired one fine and it is the most common is because of this NLD obstruction. Blackage of this NLD most commonly at the valve of Hasner. Valve of Hasner is the most common site of this obstruction. And to, for, to treat this condition, we start doing syringing. We can do syringing by one year and we can start doing probing by three years and we can do this surgery later on. And it just remember this after the surgery. After the surgery, what we'll do is we'll make this NLD to be open in the middle meatus. Initially, it will be in the inferior meatus. After this NLD surgery, we'll make them to open in the middle meatus. Right? Okay? Just remember. Next one. What is this one? Answer in the comment section. It is what it is the style or the external heart means or the external cardiolar and external remember the e for e it is because of the involvement of the gland of zeiss and this one it is this swelling inside so it is the internal cardiolar and it is due to the involvement of which gland answer in the comment section yeah like i forgot means in this congenital dacryocystitis we'll use this massage which is known as the krigler's massage krigler's massage Triglas massage. Fine, triglas massage. Yeah. And this is this type. Next one is this internal hardiolum. It occurs due to the involvement of which structure? It occurs due to the involvement of this meibomian gland. And it is acute inflammation. And if it is a chronic granulomatous inflammation of this same meibomian gland, okay, same meibomian gland, it will result in which condition? What is the name of this condition? Answer in the comment section. It is what it is the calisian. It is the calisian. And this is the calisian clamp. Calisian clamp, which we use to scoop out this calisian. Fine. And this is how this entropion means inward turning of this eyelid look like. And for upper lid, we'll use this tarsal fracture procedure. And for lower lid, we'll use this Jones procedure. Just remember upper one, we'll use this tarsal fracture. Over one will use this joint procedure. Next one. This if this lid, if yeah, we can use this collision scoop also for this collision. Next one. In a case of ectropion, in a case of ectropion, if you see ectropion means it's outward turning of this eyelid. For this, we'll use this Kant-Zonowski procedure. Fine. Kant-Zonowski procedure. Fine. Next one. This is how this thyroid ophthalmopathy. Looks like. Ophthalmopathy looks like. Fine. And what is the first muscle which is being involved in the thyroid ophthalmopathy? Answer in the comment section. Yeah, you are getting it correct. It is the inferior rectus. You just remember by the mnemonic. I am so lucky. So it will be initially, it will be in inferior rectus, then it will be. Medial rectus, then superior one, then the lateral rectus. What is this diagnosis? Yeah, what is this diagnosis based on this image? What do you think of? Answer in the comment section. Yeah, that is what it is the blue out fracture, which is due to the fracture of this inferior wall or the floor of the object, orbit, or the floor of the orbit. And the, the patient will be presenting with this features of dye. The patient won't die. They, he will present you with the features of this dye. Means there will be diplopia because of this 
cramping of this inferior rectus muscle and there will be infra orbital anesthesia and there will be pain of the limbs because of this the i will go inside fine we just remember this one. then we'll move on to just few pupillary conditions just remember as i said fine next one if you see bilateral irregularly constricted pupil it will be suggestive of it will be suggestive of which pupil it is also known it is what it is the array robertson pupil it is also known as the prostitutes pupil prostitute pupils because it will accommodate it will accommodate and it won't react to the limb. just remember it will accommodate but it won't react and if there is a dilation if there is an response to light if there is dilation and if it is occurs a transient to a viral illness so it is known as which one it is known as adis pupil and it's most commonly seen in ladies just remember this thing next one if you see this instead of constriction to the light if it gets dilated it is what it is known as this rapd relative afferent pupillary defect okay rapd which is seen in a case of optic neuritis optic neuritis just remember next one if you see this mild ptosis along with this meiosis and you cannot see this anhydrosis but if you having the history of anhydrosis it will be suggestive of which condition it syndrome answer in the comment section yeah you are getting it correct it is what it is seen in a case of harness syndrome harness syndrome fine next one we'll move on to the visual pathway in visual pathway we know just don't confuse with always don't confuse means this visual pathway it's your pathway like it's your same right same left it's not our radiological one it's the our right same right our respective right same right same left so just remember one thing in the case of optic chiasmal lesion you will get this bitemporal hemianopia bitemporal hemianopia it is actually what it is also the heteronymous hemianopia hemianopia and whereas other conditions you will see this homonymous hemianopia okay fine and if you see this temporal lobe lesions you will see this superior quadrianopsia are also known as pi in the sky or if you see this parietal lobe lesions you will see this pi on the flow pi on the flow just remember this two points and if it is a macula sparing it will be because of this occipital cortex involvement because it will be supplied with both posterior cerebral artery and the middle cerebral artery because if there is damage to posterior cerebral artery this macula will be supplied by the the macula region uh, of this occipital it will be supplied by this middle cerebral artery fine and this is the type of astigmatism you will just remembering of you will remember about this astigmatism where there is you will not not get you will be getting this focus fine and in astigmatism you just remember one conoid you just remember this word we we'll use this conoid known as strums conoid fine and there are two types of astigmatism they are known as with the rule and the against the rule with the rule means it is the cylindrical means positive plus 90 cylinder and the minus 180 minus 180 and the opposite of this one it is the against the rule and this astigmatism you will able to rule out if there is one axis it's normal another if it is falling in front it is the simple myopic if it is one normal next one is falling behind it is simple hypermotor optic if it is compound myopic both of them they falls in front if it is compound hypermotor optic both of them they fall on the head and if it is mixed one will be falling here another one will be falling in the back side so it is a mixed type so just remember don't just keep this thing simple simple fine we know the case of astigmatism will use which type of lenses will use this cylindrical lens will use this cylindrical lens just you know fine okay that's it. next one we are about to complete our lecture okay next one if you see this myopia myopia we know it's falling in front and we know they can see myopia myopia will use minus glasses and they can they can see the near vision clearly but they cannot see the far vision so what i will do is we'll keep a 
concave mirror and will die with the rose because we you know this uh, means this distant rays they are parallel in nature and will keep this convex lens and will make them to get diverged and to fall exactly on the retina so we'll use concave lens in a case of myopia whereas in a case of hypermetropia we'll focus on this retina using this convex lens so the simple things you just need to remember don't make uh, complex in these things okay fine and that is that's about this today session we are like we are going to complete this session with this few past you note just stay positive and do your part of work and do hard work and the smart work because it's just 30 more days okay don't try to cram new things fine try to revise the things which you already made so stay positive stay positive and plan for the day okay and plan for the whole day and try to complete your plan and if you stay positive it will happen and you make it happen i have this faith in you so just uh, keep yourself push and keep you yourself ahead of your goals and nice to see you in the next session also and thank you for your support like i i really like when when i'm seeing your comments like you are like absolutely awesome you are doing well in your preparation just keep this preparation um, going for next 30 more days and you will be coming with this flying calls okay and if you have any questions or queries you just stay back and will be addressing your queries for the next 10 minutes fine and that's for this session the pdf will be shared in your respective rs groups so don't worry about the pdf you just go and chill out if it's possible you just revise or you just solve some questions for today and in this today with a positive note okay and before making your for the next day just have a positive note and positive motivation and try to plan for the day and do the maximum of your best fine that's it if you if you have any doubt no doubts um that's it from my end bye bye and if you have any doubts just stay back fine thank you yeah there is two more sessions left hey thank you dev hey thank you all thank you divya thank you andres then if you don't have any doubts we'll come to for the day and we'll call up for the day and we'll meet you tomorrow with the same jobs just try to prepare like um there will be a three subjects like it will be if you you are revising the same it's okay if not just it's a two hour session it will make you to revise this complete subjects fine tomorrow we'll take micro micro derma anesthesia fine that's it then see you see you guys see you in the next session bye bye Yeah, fine. What's the doubt? Could you please ask in the comment section? Fine. If you have any doubts, don't worry. Yeah, like this, the same thing. There is a quite lot of confusions with this anti-hypertensive hypertensive drug of choice. Like mostly, we'll prefer this one, like ARBs or AC inhibitors. Fine. Whereas beta blockers, um, like beta blockers, we won't use less, but mostly we'll use ARBs or AC inhibitors. Just remember this thing. Fine. i think so i addressed your queries if you have any more queries you can 
can reach out at this telegram as the rate of Sasi Don C. And I'll help you out with this. Fine. Thank you for the day. Bye bye. Good luck. See you tomorrow. Bye.